Good morning. morning. Welcome to Onalaska United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Park Hutter. It's great to have you with us today. It is rally day. This is the beginning of our church season with Sunday school classes starting and many exciting things going on. So it's it's been a busy week getting ready. I want to say thank you to some folks. Uh, uh, First of all, we had uh, people that showed up Tuesday night for a meeting with our conference about uh, potential new uh, Methodist ministry in the Holman area. And it was interesting to hear their ideas and share some of our thoughts. Uh, Today, with Rally Day, uh, we'll have everybody go to their classes, uh, including the uh, History and Mystery of the Bible, Adult Sunday School, starts in the choir room downstairs. Margaret, you ready? Yes, Yes, there you are. Ah. Um, Our uh, Church History Sunday School class would also start today, except that Sean, uh, the leader, is helping his mom move, so that will actually be launching next Sunday on the 15th, but there's information about his class and books on the table in the lobby, so you can check that out. This week, um, uh, we've got the community dinner on uh, Tuesday night. The staff parish committee is helping to prepare that. Um, We've got some tags on the bulletin board. If you'd like to donate a dessert or some milk or uh, something else, grab one of those tags, and please invite people to come and help, uh, and to come and eat. Uh, Wednesday night, we kick off our youth programming with SOAR, SOAR Junior, and Confirmation. And uh, uh, there'll be a dinner at 6, followed by uh, orientation at uh, 6.30. Uh, For Confirmation, if you are thinking about participating in that, please let me know. Uh, And if you need help finding a mentor, please let me know. We don't need mentors this week, uh, but we will need them by the following Wednesday. Choir has started. It'll be at 7 p.m. on Thursday night. Uh, Saturday, the men's breakfast is at 8 a.m., and I'm going to be sharing some photos from my hike along Hadrian's Wall, if you're interested in that. And Megan is going to help uh, anybody who wants to tab their Bibles, put in the little tabs, uh, helping you find the books. If you order those and bring your Bible and your tabs, Saturday at 9 a.m., she's going to be having a little Bible tabbing party out in the lobby. And then next Sunday, Noteworthy, um, our bell choir is going to have an open house. And you're going to actually have bells out so people can play with those uh, between the services. um, And uh, so that should be kind of fun. And then you guys start your practices next Monday, right? Not this Monday, next Monday. Excellent. Um, Walk to Emmaus is coming up in September. The men's walk is the 19th through the 22nd, and the women's walk is the 26th through the 29th. There are still some open slots for that, so if you're interested, please talk to me, and I can connect you with some of our Emmaus alumni, and uh, uh, you can learn a little bit more and still get on those walks if you're interested. All right, let's go ahead and greet each other with the peace and grace of Jesus Christ. Let us join together in the call to worship. Boundless shaper of people and nations, you are beyond our knowing, yet closer to us than our every breath. You are before us and behind us, surrounding us with your love and fashioning all of creation in the secret depths of your heart. With every thought, with every song, and with every prayer, turn these fragile earth and vessels of our lives into the spirit of Christ. Amen. Now let us turn to hymn number 2237 in the Black Hymnal.
you may be seated. Our scripture lesson today is Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. In your pew Bibles, it's page 909, although I think you'll find this is a familiar passage. <clears throat> now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now it's time for the children. If you have a backpack that you'd like to bring up, you can grab that real quick. And we welcome all ages to come up for the backpack blessing. So come on up, Pastor Park. <laughs> Anyone has a, a bag that they would like to bring up? Okay. So, um, it's the beginning of a new school year. Most of you have probably already started school or um, if you have any teaching jobs, those kinds of things. Um, there's fears that go on with that, but also the excitement of new things and new people. But sometimes we just want to know that we have a little extra blessing behind us if, if we're a little afraid of some, some of those new things. So those backpacks probably make lots of trips back and forth to school. I know we have three kids and those backpacks have made a, had a lot of miles put on them. And sometimes they might be so heavy that it might be hard for you to walk with the backpack. I don't know how the high school students do it. I tried to pick up my daughter's backpack and um, I couldn't even lift it. I think it was about 40 pounds <laughs> with those big books. And sometimes it might be so empty that you're thinking, hmm, was I supposed to bring home something to do? And that might cause a little fear. So what I want to know is, you guys are the experts. What goes into a good backpack? How do you pick your backpack? What's important? Yeah. A brand. You might know that a brand lasts longer than other brands. Yep, some are more durable than others. Yeah. Durability, yes. Yes, I know that's a big deal at our house too. Yeah. Anything else? Pockets. Is who for who is it all about the pockets? Yeah. Yeah, some. Yeah. What about color? Do you have like a color that you like? Yeah. Some of you might like characters on your backpacks like Disney characters or pictures yeah, you have unicorns on your backpack some of you like more designs like she has butterflies on hers oh look at the sparkles well no matter what I know it goes into a lot of thinking to get a backpack because you want to find the right one for you and no matter what's in them they represent the work that is required of all you guys for that whole school year so today we're gonna bless our backpacks if you do not have a black backpack that's fine I'm gonna hand out some tags you can hold a tag. We'll see. Pastor Park, can you pass some of those around there? They are new. A new design. Can you pass those out? How about you guys? Caleb, here you go. All right, you got one there. <laughs> All right. Does everyone have a tag? Oh. Yeah? Okay. So we're gonna do a backpack blessing and then we're gonna do a special blessing for another group of people in our congregation that I think will need our blessings now that school has started, okay? So, let's hold our backpacks and our takes. Gracious God, we lift these students up to you today. Be with them as they learn and grow this year. We ask that your blessing 
be put on their backpacks as they carry them to and from school each day. Help them to remember to fill them with any homework, and as these students carry their backpacks, may they be reminded of the love and care of this congregation that surrounds them at each day at school. Show them how to serve you and help them to teach us all about your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so you guys can stay up here for a second. Now I would like any Buddy in the congregation who is a teacher of some kind, that can be a Sunday school teacher, it can be a classroom teacher, it can be a college teacher, it could be someone whose profession that you do a lot of teaching to other people. Um, I want you to go ahead and just stand up or raise your hand, and we have some special tags for you. Can I get a few of you guys to help me hand out tags? Okay. Don't hand them your tag because it's different than that, that tag. They say different things. Megan? Here we go, and I need one more. Evie? Okay, so walk around, raise your hands really tall if you do anything in your profession that's like a teacher. If you volunteer at a classroom and you have kids, please raise your hand. There's one hand, hand up here that still needs a tag. One over there that needs a tag. Right over there, yep. Anybody else? Okay. All right, thank you. All right, we're good? You got extra tags there for me? All right, so now we're gonna pay, uh, do a special blessing for all our teachers. Good and gracious God, thank you for these amazing teachers who serve our children. Give them the strength to lead, the grace to guide, and hope to thrive. Bless them beyond measure for their willingness to pour into the next generation through education. May they also be reminded that this congregation embraces their call to teaching and surrounds them with love and support. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for coming up. We love to feature uh, God moments, stories and testimonies of the ways that people in our congregation or community have experienced God. And uh, we had a group this summer that had a whole week uh, to experience God in many wonderful ways as they attended the Pine Lake Family uh, Mission Camp. And so we're going to invite anybody that participated in that to come forward. Well, good morning. Uh, I'm just curious, first of all, who here has ever been to Pine Lake Camp? Raise your hand. If, wow, wow, that's quite a lot of hands. Fantastic. So if you've been to Pine Lake Camp, you know how beautiful it is there. Uh, Pine Lake is a Methodist camp that's about two hours east of Onalaska here. And uh, it's just a, a gorgeous place, um, a small but, but beautiful lake there and all sorts of great cabins and... Um, in the, the summertime, it's, it's full of kids like John here and others who are, are going to summer camps for a weekend or a week. Uh, there are also family camps there, and uh, uh, there are grandparent-grandchild camps. There are people that just go there um, as families or couples or individuals to camp. There's so much happening there during the summer. And then every August, um, the week after the camps are done there, we end up taking a bunch of people out there and we do some work to fix up the camp and get it ready for the winter and uh, we just have a fantastic time while we're doing it too. So um, this year I think we had 21 people that were able to go to the camp and some of them stayed the entire week. Some of them, uh, like myself, were only able to go for part of the week and so Mr. Wes Hurlbert was our trip leader this year because he was there the whole time. Uh, but, uh, and the majority of the people that go are from our church here in Onalaska, but we also have people from all around the states that join us there. Uh, there are, are senior citizens and children and families and couples and individuals. Uh, it really is a, a trip that is just for anyone. And um, so we want to tell you a little bit about uh, what our experience was like this year. Uh, who wants to start? Just telling anything that, that you enjoyed about the week or things you enjoy about going to this multi-generational camp. 
Uh, Pine Lake is a special place for me. Uh, I've spent a lot of time down there, and it's just a wonderful uh, example of God's creation. And uh, it's always a pleasure to go down there. And, uh, uh, of course, I got to do a little bit with the chainsaw, and I got to do a little bit with the uh, paint sprayer. And uh, we're, we're going to have to get Ben in that chainsaw safety course so he can use that saw next time. Um, but uh, it was a fabulous week, and we got a bunch of, peop a bunch of work done. And, of course, Nick, the camp director, is always grateful for whatever... Uh, we can do to help out there because uh, they need a lot of help. Uh, Paul and Wes have mentioned that it's a uh, uh, big camp uh, full of God's beautiful uh, creation. That's 600 acres of trees that drop branches. That keeps Wes and the chainsaw pretty busy. So uh, that's great. I like to go down and uh, uh, have a meal with folks and then lead a worship service by the uh, edge of the lake, there's a little Vespers area that uh, for generations of campers, that's been a very special spot. And it's, it's wonderful to gather there and, and share communion. And uh, for the last few years, uh, we've been enjoying the cross that our work camp built uh, there. Um, in fact, uh, Nick uh, Conan, the camp director, uh, most days will uh, go out to the Vespers area, uh, summer or winter, and take a picture looking at that cross and across the lake and post a prayer or a reflection on, on his Facebook page. Um, and those are wonderful, beautiful reflections. And it's neat to see the changing character of the uh, lake and the woods uh, as the season goes round. Um, one of my favorite things was um, grabbing the eggs and feeding the chickens and feeding the birds and feeding the fish. should probably explain that a bit. <laughs> so Pine Lake has um, developed some natural learning um, things for the kids. So they have a chicken coop and um, they also did, do an aquaphonics um, system now. So uh, Nick grabbed John earlier in the week and um, taught him the chores. So each morning John went and did all the chores and he got pretty good at grabbing those eggs under the chickens, didn't you? <laughs> so, um, as Wes said, the Pine Lake is a very, very special place and um, it's amazing that you can turn into the driveway and just feel this overwhelming um, feeling of calm. And um, it's, it's just a great place to bond with your family and with other church friends and even some new friends. Um, I spent most of the week pulling weeds out of the office area, and by after a couple of days of doing that, the, the birds were getting very, very tame because there's a bunch of bird feeders right there, and that was just really neat to have uh, the nut hatches and the chipping sparrows and, and such, um, just not afraid of me and just being out there with them. Um, yeah, so I'll uh, agree with everything everybody said. Uh, you know, Pine Lake is just an awesome place. Um, I spent my week working, doing like fixing some doors and some windows and stuff like that. But my favorite part of the week was um, went for they had new paddle uh, paddle boards. Is that what they're called? The stand up paddle boards. Um, went on on the paddle board with my daughter, and it was just beautifully calm out there. We actually laid down right in the middle of the lake on our paddle boards and hung onto each other's paddle board and. Um, after some time, I'm not sure how long, she said, wake up. <laughs> uh, apparently I was snoring a little bit. So, um, but it was just a wonderful, very peaceful time and, and it felt great. So, you wanna talk about your chainsaw? Yeah. All right. I've been coming here for nine years and I've heard so much about Pine Lake and I finally asked to wait around that they would take me up and I was amazed how beautiful it is. In fact, the uh, camp director Nick talked to me about maybe going up to the uh, disabled camp for a week there. And I went up there. But then Wes gave me the helmet and the chainsaw put me to work. Oh, I almost cut off my leg. <laughs> but 
is extremely beautiful film. I would recommend everybody go at least once. I hope to get back. I think I think the camp will probably put that on their brochure now. I I I almost cut off my leg, but it was beautiful. <laughs> so we we do spend our mornings and early afternoons doing all sorts of work around the camp. We had people painting cabins, and uh, I'm not very handy, but I found myself climbing around on the rafters of a of a big woodshed and putting a tin roof on top of that. Uh, we had people that were fixing windows and. <laughs> we had people that were fixing windows and dragging brush and doing chores around the camp and all sorts of things. So they really do have something for everyone. And um, it's, uh, we, we would love it next year if we could even double the size of our group. They have so much capacity uh, for a lot of people to go out there and help. And um, we have a fantastic week. It's very, very affordable because we only pay for our meals. They cook our, our meals for us there. And uh, they let us stay for free because we're helping out the camp. So for, uh, for an adult, I think it was $180 this year for an entire week. Um, that's all your meals, all your lodging, and a wonderful vacation where you're also getting to make a difference, too. So um, next year, we'll be going again uh, in mid-August, and we hope that you'll be able to join us. Thank you very much. Hey man, what a blessing uh, it is to be able to participate in that. And uh, our church has been the ringleader in that program for years. So um, they liked it so much, they put our name on one of the cabins. <laughs> Literally, there's an Onalaska United Methodist Church cabin there at the uh, Lake, uh, Pine Lake that uh, our church built in the 1950s. Yeah, so uh, long, long associations. All right, we're going to move into our prayer of confession. You can find this in the program or on the overhead. God of our lives, you search us and know us. We have refused to take up your cross to bear the burdens that are ours to carry. We have not given up our attachments to possessions or to self. We have not counted the cost of walking into an unknown future with you. Help us turn away from evil that we may walk with you once more. The Holy One rejoices in our repentance, walking with us in lives of love and service. In the grace-filled love of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Are you familiar with the internet meme, Challenge Accepted? It's kind of the modern version of I double dog dare you. Now, Challenge Accepted began as a catchphrase on the sitcom How I Met Your Mother, where one of the characters would accept ridiculous or seemingly impossible challenges. But of course, like all things internet, once it caught on, it really, really got ridiculous and funny. Make the biggest burger in the world? Challenge accepted. Carry all these grocery bags? Challenge accepted. Run faster than a raging bull? Challenge accepted. Inflate a tractor tire with the bicycle pump? Challenge 
accepted. Is it a drive through Challenge accepted. <laughs> Defeat the babysitter with my evil toddler ways. Challenge accepted. Of course, the internet being the internet, there were inevitably cats as well. Unravel this giant ball of yarn. Challenge accepted. Eat this watermelon. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Now, we all know that competitive instinct. If somebody says that we can't do something, ooh, we want to prove them wrong. If someone goes bigger than us, we try to outdo them. Years ago, I took our kids to a little restaurant in Mosny that advertised all-you-can-eat French toast. Oh, really? Challenge accepted. We decided that we would challenge each other to a French toast eating contest because that's what dads do with the kids uh, when they've got responsibility for them. So eighth grade Anna ate 11 pieces. Whoa. Eric, who was a fifth grader at the time, ate 13 pieces. I managed to choke down 14 pieces of French toast. But our son Cameron, who was in eighth grade, made it all the way to 15. We had to carry him out the door. <laughs> but we all made the dry eraser leaderboard there in the church. And now, so far, um, I have not been brave enough to do, take the Unks Mess Challenge here at Marge's restaurant. But just about every town has this kind of thing, right? Who can resist a challenge? Sometimes the challenge is a football game. We can beat you. Oh, yeah, challenge accepted. Sometimes the challenge is a quilting project. Look at all these pieces. Oh, yeah, challenge accepted. Anything can be a challenge. It's a fun way to motivate ourselves. For instance, sometimes I challenge myself to mow the yard in creative patterns because I get bored mowing the yard. And so instead of just going around the edges and working my way in, sometimes I'll mow diagonal stripes. Sometimes I'll mow in circles that start to overlap, and then it looks like the aliens came to my yard. Mowing isn't my favorite, but challenging myself makes it fun. So for 2019, on Alaska United Methodist Church's goal is connecting and reconnecting. It's part of our mission, it's part of our vision. You remember those, right? Ah, you can find them on the back of the bulletin. Let's take another look here. Remember our mission? It is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Let's, let's say that together. To make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And then remember our vision is to... Next... Love unconditionally, prepare our hearts, minds, and hands, serve in all the ways we can, and celebrate God in all we do. To make disciples and to love all people, we have to connect with them. That's our goal. We started this year early in the spring by uh, reconnecting with the people in the pews around us. Remember playing bingo and learning about each other? That was fun. And then we emphasized connecting with our neighbors, uh, those who live close to the church here, those who live near our homes. And we celebrated those connections by hosting a picnic in the early summer, and that was fun too. Our third goal this year is to connect with our larger community, the Onalaska, La Crosse, Holman, West Salem area. We're a regional church. We have people from all these areas that come here. And so that's what we're focusing on this month. We want to get to know the people of our community better. We want to understand what they like and what they need. We want, uh, we want to know them and have them get to know us. So why all this connecting? Well, it is what Jesus told his disciples to do. Our scripture today is the Great Commission. Along with the Great Commandment, it's one of the two cornerstones of, of Jesus' instructions to his disciples. And Jesus gives his disciples their marching orders. He says, go to all the nations, all the people of the world, and make disciples of them, teaching them everything I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you to the very end of the age. Now these are 
famous words. And in fact, Jesus' mission for the church is so important that in one form or another, it appears in every gospel in the Bible, plus the book of Acts. In Mark 16, you read, go into all the world and proclaim the good news. In Luke 24, Jesus explains that the whole point of his ministry is to show people that the Messiah is to rise from the dead and repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations. And in John 20, Jesus tells his disciples, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And then in Acts, just before he rises up to heaven, he tells the disciples, you're going to receive power from the Holy Spirit and you're going to be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. So all four Gospels and the book of Acts, it's there. Go and make disciples of all people. Now, there are a lot of things that go on in churches, and especially in our church. We've got rally day and Sunday school and community dinner, uh, reconciling, the Christmas cantata, small groups, Stephen ministry, bell choir, potlucks, mission trips, soar and confirmation, and I ran out of air. Uh, the list goes on and on. And sometimes we get so wrapped up in these projects that we miss the big picture. It's easy to lose the forest for the trees. It's easy to get so focused on these activities that we forget the point of all these activities or our purpose. Remember, everything we do is to fulfill the mission that Jesus gave us. Go to all the people and make disciples. Go tell everyone that Jesus loves them and that Jesus forgives them. Go show Jesus' love to everyone we meet. Go. Go to all the world. Go big or go home. Go connect with your community and with all the people you meet. Make a friend. Be a friend. Maybe bring a friend to know Jesus. Maybe bring a friend to church. Hmm. Challenge accepted. We know it's a big challenge for folks, and we all want to stay, you know, inside our little bubbles, our friends, our familiar uh, spots, our Sunday school classes, our small groups, our social media circles. But Jesus says, go to all the people. Go big or go home. So to help you out uh, this month, we're going to put a challenge sheet in the bulletin every week. So if you look for this, it's bright pink, it's hard to miss. And each sheet is going to have six bite-sized connection challenges for Monday through Saturday, although because I'm not very good at the computer, they're misnumbered on the sheets this morning, but there's six of them. Our challenge to you is to take this sheet home with you and fill it out during the week. You can do one challenge a day, Monday through Saturday, you can do a bunch in one day, whatever you want, but you know, go big. If you bring your sheet back completed next week and give it to me, you get a mini candy bar. If you complete all four sheets, then we're going to put you in a drawing for a $25 script card early in October, right? Challenge accepted. Best of all, you'll be taking some steps forward on the mission that Jesus has assigned to us, to you and to me the main thing that we're supposed to do. Go to all the people and make disciples. Go big or go home. Challenge accepted. Amen.
Amen. We have a chance now to pray, to pray for those things that trouble us as well as those things that give us joy. What would we like to lift up in prayer today? Well, today is Bev's uh, was it, was it birthday. And then Bev, how old are you? What's your birthday, Bev? 93? Oh my goodness. Happy birthday. So your sister Kathy made it to her destination after 32 hours of traveling. Okay, so she's in Kenya. Uh, prayers for Will, who's got uh, shingles. So prayers for your, your brother Chip, as he uh, just kind of suffers and declines a bit. So, so prayers for Pat, who uh, just went through kidney transplant, and her daughter uh, donated the kidneys. So we pray for their strong recovery. Okay, so prayers and thanksgiving for the volunteers and mission group that was putting up the house in Elroy, and more coming next week. And Wes can help you out if you got questions. So the blessing of your first great-grandchild, a little girl. So, wonderful. Challenge accepted. Uh, so festival has a sale on 33-cent canned goods, and Gene is challenging us to load up for the food pantry collection. So, excellent. So prayers for Roger, who's recovering from his bladder cancer surgery and still taking uh, twice daily uh, uh, trips to the hospital. And... Prayers for Riley and family. Happy birthday, Riley, at age 13. Good for you. So prayers for an extended family member who's entering hospice. Um, I want to uh, lift up a woman uh, that uh, we helped as a uh, church this week uh, who was uh, uh, put out a plea to local churches. She is moving out of an abusive relationship and uh, we were able to rent the moving van and provide some uh, food assistance and some labor to her as she was moving. So uh, prayers for her continued safety and for her family as well. Yeah, we can't forget the hurricanes. So uh, prayers for those folks uh, uh, suffering through that. All right, let's go ahead and bow our heads. We'll take a moment of silent prayer. Lord, we're reminded as we pray today that life is full of setbacks and difficulties um, and challenges. And sometimes we have to take them on whether we want to or not. And yet you have promised to be with us and walk with us through the dark valleys of life to bring healing, to bring peace, uh, to bring comfort, to bring hope. And so for all those that are, are sick, or suffering for those who are mourning lost loved ones, Lord, we pray that they will feel your touch. Uh, Lord, for uh, people that are especially suffering uh, in the face of the hurricane, uh, we pray for safety, we pray for swift recovery and help. Lord, uh, we also uh, have many blessings in life. And uh, the blessings sometimes bring their own challenges as well. But uh, when we get the sunshine, we take the rain, and uh, we are grateful because it all brings growth. Uh, Lord, we pray that you will continue to strengthen us uh, uh, through birthdays, uh, through anniversaries, uh, through new seasons, uh, whether it be school or work or life. Um, that in each new opportunity that we remember that uh, you are with us and you lend us strength, that you rejoice with us and that you have good plans for us, plans for hope and not for despair. Lord, we bring all these things to you and we join in the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And give us our gifts as we forgive those who have trespassed. And give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I ask you to be the power and the glory of the Lord. Amen.
Amen. We have a chance now to share our gifts and offerings with the Lord. I'm going to ask the ushers to come around. If you'd prefer to give electronically, you can go to onalaskaumc.org slash give. O Lord, you are worthy to receive all glory, honor, and praise, for from your will comes all of our being. Bless now these gifts that we offer in thanksgiving for your goodness. Amen. We thank you for worshiping with us today. I um, hope this has been a blessing to you. If you are a guest and you'd like to know more about this church that takes on many challenges uh, joyfully and that uh, often sees uh, great accomplishments in the power of the Lord. Ask the folks around you and they can tell you about the ways that they've connected with people in our congregation and people in our community. If you'd like to connect through prayer, then give me a call this week. I'd be happy to spend some time with you. We're going to close now with a song and a blessing and then we'll go forth.
Man, that makes me want to go out marching. Boom. Let's carry God's story to the nation. May God make his face shine upon you. May he bless you. May he keep you in peace all the days, all the steps of your lives. Amen.